But with Man of Steel, I'm just curious about sort of the story process for you. Um, I, I know I've heard you say that it's uh, sort of about man's first contact with an alien and, and, a, and a, a, a man growing up with two fathers. Was that sort of the concept from the beginning for yeah. you? And, and, and what was sort of the process of breaking that story with Chris Nolan and, and, and rebooting this, the franchise? I can't say much about that other than, you know, Superman is an incredibly well-known, iconic figure. And I think my challenge was to try to figure out to a certain extent, he's kind of cinematically frozen in amber. I mean, a lot of people think of Superman, and they think of the Donner films. It's been, I don't know, 37 years since the first Donner film came out. It's been a long time, and the world has moved on. I love those movies, and my goal was to figure out a way, if I could recontextualize him, perhaps, and figure out a way to make him relatable. And I thought, if I can find, and even though he's inhuman and he's an alien, if I can find a way that people to humanize him, then hopefully I will have done my job and people will care about him. He's a tough character because he's invulnerable. You have to give him emotional vulnerabilities um, and, and hopefully that way he can become more accessible to the audience. Did you find that your extensive knowledge of comic book lore and the history of, these char of the character, did that really help you in sort of the it writing did, process? It did help, although writing Batman, even Da Vinci, Superman. I mean, I mean, yes, I would go to the comic books, but I also I I call from a lot of sources that don't have anything to do for, with comic books. You know, I read a lot of mythic poems and verses for Superman, uh, Beowulf and Gilgamesh and hero legends and things like that. Um, um, not just comic books. Uh, what was your process, sort of? working with Zach during production. Did you have a lot of involvement or just kind of I, hand the script off? Yeah, I, no, I was involved a lot. I was on the set about half the time. We kind of overlapped with Da Vinci, but I would come and go, and Zach's great. I, I, I love him to death. He's a blast to work with. I've met Henry a couple of times, and I think... Henry's also a really nice guy. Yeah. What, no, I know, it's not always that way. <laughs> what was sort of... <clears throat> when you were on the set for the first time and saw him in the suit, for the first time, I mean, what was your your impression? I was like, holy crap, that's Superman. I mean, I, I tell my kids, my sons, you know, I work with Superman and Batman. I, we w went and visited the set one day, my six-year-old, uh, I timed it so that Henry was in the suit, you know, when we showed up and was like, wow, you do work with Superman. So I got a lot of cred with my kids. That's that awesome. Day. What did you think about uh, the choice to cast the first African-American Perry White? I thought it was awesome. I mean, Lawrence Fishburne, you can't get a better actor. No, I, and it's silly people are like, you can't have a black guy named White. And I'm like, well, what about Barry White? I mean, <laughs> I just, I thought that was stupid. It was, it was, he just get the best actor. The choice to not include Lex Luthor in the first film, what, what was that choice for you? Uh, I don't think anyone's ever confirmed that we haven't included him. And uh, the rumor is that Jimmy Olsen is a female in this film? Uh, I can't comment on that. Do you have ideas past the Having first film? Having planned a trilogy. Okay. That, that I, I sort of took from Chris, which is put everything you have into this film, worry about the sequel once the movie's done. Are there, as a fan of the comic books, are there characters that you would like to include sure, in the future but I, but films? I won't say who they are. <laughs> Keep those, those ideas to the yourself. The Wonder Twins. <laughs> oh, no, that's, that's going to get everyone going crazy. And then I just wanted to ask you about uh, Godzilla. What were your contributions to that film? You know, relatively minor, honestly. I, I didn't have a lot of time, and I just came on and did about three weeks of what they call script doctoring. I don't even think it was enough to get credit. Okay. Um, so I just did a little character work and stuff, you know. Kind of punched it up. Yeah. Yeah, excellent. Invisible Man, is that something you're still working on? Still languishing in development hell. Okay. Well, but maybe one day. You know, obviously comic book movies are the biggest thing now and have been over the last 10 or 15 years. And I really think that it's because of Blade. And Blade was in many ways, I think, the template for the modern comic book film. Sure. As the writer of that movie and, and involved in so many since then, I mean, what is your sort of feeling? You must look back with a lot of pride on that project. Sure, yeah. I mean, I, and obviously it preceded the X-Men and things like that. I think the other thing that happened with Blade is that prior to that, there was a feeling that Marvel and DC maybe each had about a half dozen characters that were viable as film properties. And then with Blade, you think, my God, it's such a tertiary character. If you can make a viable franchise out of a character like Blade, 
and you can make a viable franchise off of any of these characters. Um, so I definitely take a lot of pride in that, and I'm happy that we could kind of help usher in the modern era of comic book films. Yeah, and I mean, you really reinvented them and then had the opportunity to reinvent Batman as well. That was awesome. And then Superman, so yeah. it's... I'm, I like what I do. <laughs> well, you do no, it so no, well. No complaints. <laughs>